Jingle Jangle, he sprints into action. The local Kmart, his only bastion. Tim Allen scurries upon your bed. For Santa's here, and we are dead. It's expected to indulge in some of our favorite holiday films during this time of year. Those great classics of yuletide nature. Whether it be stop motion specials or Adam Sandler, there's no lack of content when it comes to Christmas capers. But one collection of films stands far above and below the rest. Yes, The Santa Claus, starring Tim, the Tool Man, the Shaggy Dog, Alan. Usually, most holiday tales have a neat, wrapped-up ending, but this, well, we got two sequels. And consider the time frame it released from the mid-90s to the mid-2000s and all the drastic changes that went about the Walt Disney Company at this time. And surely enough, shit's probably gonna get weird. Well, kids, I, I certainly hope you've been good this year, because it looks like Santa just took out the Pearson home. It's coming! And generally nowadays, I, I prefer to dive into some of the behind the scenes stories and what could have happened of whatever I'm talking about. But this franchise is about as clear cut as they come. Tim Allen wore a fat suit and he didn't gain 300 pounds for the role. There's really not a whole lot to say on this front, but luckily the films themselves are bizarre enough to warrant discussing. So, uh, well, that's what we're doing today. Now uh, what? This is a pretty standard Christmas film for the 90s. It's somewhat depressing with a kernel of Christmas cheer. It almost gets the job done. Tim Allen is a business guy. He does business things and he's working, doing those things at the beginning of the movie. He makes toys like Santa, but it's in a business way. But uh-oh, his ex-wife informs him he has to take care of their son, Tim Allen Jr., over the holidays. And Tim Allen's not too happy about this. He's got his own stuff going on, and he's not really a jolly, holly, holly jolly Christmas man. So after a lackluster Christmas Eve at uh, Denny's, Tim Allen Jr. falls asleep only to be awoken by noises of a rather large man climbing on the roof. Alerting his father, the two go outside expecting to be slaughtered in a home invasion. Instead, oh, well, what do you know? It's Santa Claus. Tim Allen then kills him. Uh, bye-bye, Santa. Bye-bye. Not too bothered by all this, he investigates the body before it vanishes into the void. Then he grabs the dead guy's clothes and, uh, wears them. But, oh, <laughs> what do you know? He starts swirling and whirling around the neighborhood, forced to enforce Santa's expect. Route. They are then transported to the North Pole, and things here are as you'd expect. There's elves that do things and make toys. It's very whimsical. What the elves tell us is that when a Santa Claus dies, whoever kills him gets to be Santa Claus. It's a little barbaric, but it does make sense considering how desirable a job this would be. But interestingly enough, the elves do not mourn their old dead boss at all. Not a single tear is shed for what I assume was a pretty shitty Santa Claus. The only other alternative is that Santa Clauses come and die every two years or so, and they get replaced so fast that no emotional attachment is ever formed. Tim Allen and son return home after this lengthy Christmas adventure. The next day, it's understandably difficult to process that night's events. Tim Allen is convinced it flat out never happened. It was just a dream. But the problem is, his son, Tim Allen Jr., also had the same exact dream. Of course, Tim Allen and most people in this universe do not believe in Santa Claus, which, you know, is, is a major problem that has been stated many times about these kind of films. I mean, just think about it. In this world, every Christmas, gifts are placed under somebody's tree in the middle of the night. They just appear there, and nobody thinks Santa exists. Like, they know they didn't go out and buy this stuff, so where do they where do they think they where do they think it came from Tim Allen Jr. keeps going on to friends and family about how Santa Claus is real and Tim Allen is the real Santa Claus yeah everyone thinks he's 
is fucking crazy. What they, I mean, I, I, I kind of think he's crazy. As far as anybody knows, when Tim Allen took care of his son, something so traumatic happened that he constructed this whole narrative in his mind. But through an act of Christmas magic, Tim Allen becomes overweight. Disenfranchised by family and work, Tim Allen is left alone, forced to cope with the reality at hand. He killed a man in cold blood and stole his clothes. The rest of the film is the expected, oh, Tim Allen's crazy and the kid's crazy and he disappears and did Tim Allen kidnap the kid? Oh no, Tim Allen Santa Claus. And then everyone's all happy that Tim Allen Santa Claus and he flies away. Overall, a fine film. There's some good, some bad, uh, but it's mostly sad. I mean, think about it. Tim Allen has no relationship with any other human being at all. And the only reason people like him in the end is because he's Santa Claus. Also, he fucking killed the guy. If the Santa Claus one is grounded in reality, broken up with the occasional wacky moment, the Santa Claus two would be one wacky moment, broken up with the occasional grounding in reality. So Tim Allen has been Santa Claus for a few years now, and he's a pro, with the elves forced to do his bidding and access to a eclectic set of magical powers, he's more or less content to live out his immortal years as king slash god of the north. There's a problem though. Apparently in the rules of being Santa, you need a Mrs. Claus. Or you can't be Santa. <laughs> That's right. He's gotta get married. The Claus is back. Look out! But this year, Santa ran into a little problem. I've gotta get married? For some reason, nobody decided to notify him about this. Not until right now, like two weeks before he's gotta find a wife. At first I thought, you know, this is kind of weird. Like, requiring marriage in any, you know, set of contractual agreements for a job is a bit odd. And then I thought about it. See, he's forced to uphold the standard of the traditional Santa public image. Because he's an authoritarian ruler, and his image is everything. The Claus is back. Look out! But this year, Santa ran into a little problem. I've got to get married? Beyond that, you know, Tim Allen Jr. is... He's on the naughty list. So there's another problem. But see, being Santa Claus, he can't just leave the North Pole. Without their glorious leader, the elves could fall into chaos. So he gets his closest advisors to build him a robot of himself. Ah! Woo! That's delicious! I think Santa feels a little buzz! Okay, so he goes back to the real world and he meets with their family and oh, they love him because he's Santa Claus and his kid's all like, you're not my real dad. And he meets with the principal and whoa, she's hot. She's gonna be the wife because Tim Allen's got his eye on her. Now this all goes exactly as you'd expect from here. He's got to gain the heart of love interest while also keeping his options open. Of course, eventually he has to break the news to her that there is a real Santa Claus and he is said Santa Claus. Now it doesn't help that he's losing his old man obese image day by day, so she just thinks he's some crazy asshole and kicks him out. In the meantime, the North Pole is subject to Tim Allen bot. He's taken the subtle authoritarian nature of Tim Allen and turned it up to 11. Stop the work please, everybody stop the work. Merry Christmas! That's nice. At first, nobody notices that he's any different at all. But eventually, the elves are upset because now they're, they're slaves? I mean, I guess it was fine before because Santa Claus seems nice, but when he's mean, oh no, now it's bad to be a slave. Elf Man Boy goes to Tim Allen in the real world to warn him that the government is falling apart. Tim Allen is torn between having to go back to the North Pole to do something, but the love interests doesn't love him because she thinks he's crazy. So then his kids convince, I don't know, his kids like convince her that he's Santa. I don't know how that happens. I don't care what you show me. I don't believe Tim Allen is Santa Claus. 
So Tim Allen goes and kills Tim Allen bot and the tooth fairy flies the, the principal to the North Pole. Hooray, the day's saved. But oh wait, the main point of the movie, Tim Allen still isn't married. And if he's not married, he can't be Santa Claus. So he informs the love interest of this new development. And this shit is kind of weird. Okay, so he first has to say, like, I only started talking to you because I need to find a wife. And she doesn't seem completely into the idea of marrying this guy that she met like four days ago. But the whole Santa regime is there. And they're like, hey, if you don't do this, Christmas will die. Christmas itself. The idea of Christmas will die. Do you want to kill Christmas? Do you think you can live with that for the rest of your life? You bitch. And of course she says yes. Now look, this is a bit of an oddity in a franchise that already had one oddity because it's bad. It's really bad, but it's also, nah, it's, it's just bad. Tim Allen is still Santa. What a surprise. The wife is still the wife of Santa and she's pregnant. Christmas is coming up. Tim is stressed out over all these things and the council of gods are coming to check up on him today. Apparently, Jack Frost is a thing that exists in this universe and he wants his own holiday, Jaquanza. He's willing to face Santa out of the whole mythical god portion of the universe to do this too. Not acknowledging him as a threat, Tim Allen gets cucked into showing him the ropes of the holiday game. At the same time, his wife is sad because the North Pole sucks and she doesn't think the elves are people. She's kind of scared of them. So Tim Allen decides to invite her parents to the North Pole. Hooray, the in-laws are coming to town. Santa Claus 3. Now the in-laws don't really know anything about Tim Allen. They don't know he's Santa Claus. So they gotta turn the North Pole into Canada and convince them that he's just an average toy maker. Now they're not too fond of him because, well, he kind of just married their daughter after knowing her for four days and then she moved far away and never spoke to them again. Oh no, that Jack Frost is scheming. He starts interrogating the elves to find out how to take over Santa Claus, and we find out that one of the Infinity Stones is hidden inside a snow globe. The way that it works, I guess, is if Santa Claus holds the Infinity Stone and says the words, I wish I was never Santa Claus, the whole universe explodes and time erases itself all the way back to the 15 minute mark of the 1994 film, The Santa Claus. So then Jack kills the ex-wife and yeah, this guy, he fucks up, but he tips over a tree and then say, and Tim Allen hates his life now. And then Jack's like, hey, here's a present for you. Guess it's in the present. It's the snow globe. And then Santa at this moment, this terrible moment in his life says those magic words that he knows he should never say because if he does, okay, yeah, they go back in time. Back in 1994, Jack kills Santa, steals the coat and time is reset once more. Enter Universe B. Tim Allen is still a businessman doing business things. While driving a fancy car through a Hollywood studio lot, he meets up with his ex-wife, who informs him that the other members of the family are at the North Pole, which is an amusement park for some reason. They go to the North Pole and a lot of weird shit happens. Why is Jack doing this? Does he need the money or something? I don't get it. After seeing the horrific universe he's trapped in, Tim Allen uses stupid movie logic to trick Jack into relinquishing the throne. Yes, they're sent back one more time, and Tim kills Santa, and the universe is reset. All the problems Tim had before are gone for some reason. The in-laws just like him now. The wife isn't upset, and Jack Frost is dead. All is well. The day is saved. Hip, hip, hooray. And there's not really a lesson at the end, other than... Ideally, Tim Allen is Santa Claus. And that's the end. That's the end of the movie. This is it. These films take a lot of joy in making you uncomfortable, and I respect that. But the moments that are supposed to be heartwarming are not heartwarming at all. Nothing positive that happens to the character of Tim Allen feels earned. He doesn't want to be Santa Claus, but he has to be. He doesn't manage to make the love interest believe that he's Santa Claus. Somebody else does. 
and then his goons just convince her to marry him. The in-laws don't like him, and it's not like he pulls them over to his side. They just like him for some reason. And then he says he's Santa Claus, so of course they like him after that part. The only thing he's ever shown initiative over is managing to keep his rule over the nation. I mean, this is really the story of a disenfranchised businessman with no friends or family who slowly goes off the deep end seeking to hold on to his authority. As the series goes on, everything becomes more and more disconnected from reality. The problems become increasingly outlandish. And by the end of the films, everything is just good and fine and happy and well, even though it probably shouldn't be. And that's why I believe this whole series is actually just in Tim Allen Jr.'s imagination. The moment he sees his father kill another man in cold blood on Christmas Day, it drives him to create a false reality in his mind. No, Tim Allen didn't just kill a guy who was invading the home. It was Santa Claus. And now he gets to be Santa Claus. And they can bond over the fact that he's Santa Claus. Oh, the fun they will have. The years will pass and he'll get remarried to Mrs. Claus. And magical figures will come and solve all the problems they have. Oh, what fun it will be. Or what fun it could have been. Santa Claus is dead and Tim Allen killed him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. In.